The United States problem on autos has generally been uh, with Mexico, and that's why we haven't been included, because it's a bilateral issue between Canada and Mexico. Let's hope they can resolve it so that uh, we can get back to the table and hopefully conclude successfully an agreement. And so uh, when Canada does come to the table, we've heard that there have been these sticking points. Um, we still think that they're likely to be uh, the dispute resolution mechanism and also likely a sunset clause on the deal. Are we willing to compromise, do you think? I don't think we should, and I don't think the Trudeau government has been willing to, and I think that's a good thing. I think a sunset uh, clause would basically make the deal uh, irrelevant. People would stop investing in Canada if they thought the deal would be gone in five years. I think what we want to achieve is some certainty, and uh, obviously the dispute resolution clause is the most important thing for Canada, so I think by and large the, uh, the federal government's got it right on those two issues. What about increasing American access to the dairy market? Because this administration seems to be pretty uh, set on getting more access to your market. Market. Well, I think they have the capacity to do that. Uh, the previous government did that with respect to negotiations with uh, the European Union and with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, that was about 2.5%, I think, with uh, the TPP that Americans uh, would have obtained. And so it wouldn't be hard to, uh, to offer that up again, obviously providing compensation to uh, Canadian dairy farmers. Uh, that would fall far short of, uh, you know, of uh, uh, capitulating entirely on, uh, on uh, supply management. How crucial is it that if the three sides get some sort of agreement, especially before López Obrador takes office on December 1st? You know, I think the new Mexican president has sort of quietly said, let the current government uh, that's in power until December 1st deal with it and let them wear it, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing uh, for Canada or for the future uh, of NAFTA. We've worked well with the government of uh, President Peña Neto. Uh, obviously, our prime minister and the president get along uh, very, very well. Obrador is a socialist. He has problems with capitalism, not just with uh, free trade. So there's an unexpected window to conclude an agreement, and the outgoing Mexican <laughs> president would uh, bear the, uh, the praise or the, uh, or the criticism for any such deal. So uh, let's hope that uh, the, uh, the government, our negotiators, can uh, sharpen their pencils and come to a deal in the coming weeks. John, I want to turn to uh, what's happening between Canada and Saudi Arabia, you know, in the context of maybe getting closer to resolution on restoring an existing trade deal. We now have this huge trade uh, dispute, if you can call it that, a diplomatic dispute, but with real-world uh, ramifications from Saudi Arabia. Give me your, your sense of whether Canada handled this properly or not. A tweet from Foreign Affairs, uh, was that too much intervention mm -hmm. in another country? You know, I mean, I think Christy Freeland is certainly one of the better ministers in this government, but I don't think they've handled this issue well. Uh, since Dion, uh, Stefan Dion was uh, the foreign minister and both criticized and approved the uh, massive arms deal that uh, uh, Canada negotiated with uh, Saudi Arabia. You know, when you sign a $3.5 billion arms deal, you sort of expect a thank you, especially for the 3,000 jobs that are really at risk in London, uh, Ontario. Uh, we should be uh, standing beside a friend and ally like uh, Saudi Arabia. They have the threat from the Islamic uh, State next door that would love to take Mecca and Medina. We want them to be able to defend themselves. We don't want Iran. Uh, you know, they've already taken out the government in Yemen, and obviously the Saudis are pushing back against uh, Iran. Obviously, we share the same interests as the Saudis, but, you know, we disagree on some values. But there's no doubt that uh, the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, is taking the country in the right direction, pursuing more, a more moderate form of Islam, reducing funding to Wahhabi uh, proselytization around the world, uh, but also making major reforms on human rights and women's rights. You know, the last time I uh, was in Saudi Arabia, uh, on a bilateral visit. I spent uh, some time with uh, now King Salman. We spent 15 minutes talking about women's rights. I think the Saudis respect when you take these conversations direct, face-to-face, -face, and you do it in a respectful manner and not uh, like a Trump-style tweet, uh, which has hmm. uh, obviously caused great damage to Canadian interests. And yet the Saudis have hardened their position. Do you believe that it will make it harder for the release of those women rights activists now? You know, I mean, I think, I think when you just tweet and then put out statements in Arabic and don't have the courage to look at the leaders face to face, you know, Badawi obviously is a major uh, case between Canada. When I was foreign minister, I took that, uh, that case directly to senior members of the royal family. Uh, doing it face to face right. is the most effective way to accomplish results and not simply uh, doing tweets. This is going to cause major problems for jobs in London, Ontario. It's going to cause major problems in our medical system with the 12 to 16,000 Saudi students, you know, agricultural problems, even trade investment and what's really needed is the prime minister to get on a plane and get over to Riyadh and try to resolve this uh, this issue that's in the interests of Canada and Canadian workers and the Canadian people